Hey coach, welcome back to the podcast and welcome back to a new episode with my friend from Valor Accounting Services, Andrew Casal. Andrew, how are you today, sir? Yeah, not bad at all, Leo. How are you doing? I'm doing I'm doing very well, very well. Andrew, before we start, how is the plunge going? I know we spoke about it in the last episode. How how is that going? It's going well. I haven't done a plunge in about about a week or so and uh Usually when you stop doing a plunge for a while, um, the next time you go go back onto it, it's um, a bit of a sh- it's more of a shock to the system. Uh, so, yeah, I need to get back on it. But it's yeah, it's good. It's good. <laughs> it's like a workout, isn't it? If you don't go regularly. That's it. That's it. <laughs> nice. OK, good, good. Well, I, I'm, I'm, I think what you're trying to say is that it's been really cold. So that's why you haven't gone. Is that right? All right, okay, you got me, you got me. <laughs> it's all right. The summer's nearly here, Andrew, don't worry. You can plunge yeah. away. <laughs> all right, guys, welcome back. Um, now, if you haven't watched our previous episodes, okay, it was a and a with Andrew. Uh, go and check it out. Uh, we had various coaches that wrote into us with questions, and we put Andrew a little bit on the spot. I think he did. He did. He done quite well, though. He done quite well. And um, so, if you guys have any questions for Andrew, send them in. Uh, Make money coaching sports at gmail.com. Uh, we will be doing more Q and A stuff with Andrew uh, coming up. So, any questions you have in terms of accounting, taxes, um, or finances, Andrew is your man, and he's the person that will be able to answer. Uh, those questions so today Andrew we're going to be talking about what to expect when first working with an accountant now from previous experience right you've been my first accountant and it hasn't been a bad experience right so um so I I haven't got the experience of working with anyone that's not as good as you right and I'm pro- probably a, a very very fortunate so uh, but I do know some coaches that I speak to, they have had quite bad experiences with accountants. Um, so take it away, Andrew. Uh, this is your your floor. Yeah, no worries. No worries. Thanks, Theo. I appreciate the kind words, by the way. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess, yeah, a good, a good clue of whether, and this is why business owners, uh, sports coaches should speak to a number of accountants is to understand how they work initially because the first interaction you have with your accountant gives you a good idea of how they're going to be going forward and we're also going to talk about the type of questions you should ask your accountant as well because it's a working relationship and the idea is you're probably going to be working together for for a long time as long as your business uh exists essentially mm. uh so that hopefully is, is a long time yeah. so we're gonna basically go through the first the first kind of real interaction you have and the first one is it's all going to be around understanding the business and this is what accountants should do this is what i do obviously i can't talk on any other accountants of what they they may do but this is this is kind of how I've refined the process to benefit both parties. So the first step really is booking in time. Have a the account will have like a calendar link, a booking link. And the first thing what I do is I make sure that when so when the client books in time, there's a little section saying add as much info as possible of whatever pain points you've got or any sort of services you're looking for add as much info as possible other accounts will have a similar sort of booking system add as much info as possible because that gives the account as more information to to plan ahead to work on um you know ahead of the call so once that's done you've got your first conversation now it is really going to be about understanding the, the business um and Things are going to be covered, such as understanding how the client works, how the business works. And there's going to be questions like the business size, the business size and um, 
and also how the accountant works as well. So the first thing will be is how does the how does the how does a sports coach, you know, run its records, its record keeping? What does it have a system? Is it on a spreadsheet? Is it on an accounting system? You know, these are the type of questions because based on this information, we'll tell the accountant whether they can work with you mm. or, or or not. And also, if they can work with you, there could be certain options available to that client, to that business owner, um, after the uh, after you know finishing the call. So, just to give you an example. If the client has got is already on, let's say, for example, QuickBooks or Zero, an accounting software, that particular accountant may not be able to work on certain softwares. So that could be an automatic, like, no, nope, you know, can't work with you, or we can move, we can move your books onto other software. But that's very, very important. Some clients may not be comfortable moving their books onto another account system. So this conversation is quite important. Yeah. So taking you back to where you taught, you you said about pain points, right? Coaches might have. So for any coach watching, give give them a, a few examples of pain points that they might have with their business that yeah. you that you as an accountant will will solve. Yeah, of course, of course. So the first the first most kind of basic pain point is I need help filing my taxes. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's the first one. Now, having said that, there could be other pain points like I need to file my taxes earlier. Maybe I've got a, another accountant, they're not filing it in time. Or they they want in to streamline their accounting function of their business. Mm. You know, maybe they just don't have much of a system going on. Maybe they've already got an accounting system and they don't really have to use it quite well and they want to really spend more time on their own business. Mm -hmm. And certain other things as well could be, and this is something that can be added on later on, but maybe the sports coach wants to just streamline their their invoice system. Maybe they're creating invoices on Word or or something quite basic and they want to send their their you know their customers, their clients a automated invoice type of system, collecting payments might automate that. That could also be part of the pain point as well okay Perfect. so there's a, a variety of, of of pain points that, that I've, I've, I've come across but the most basic one is hey i i need to submit my taxes can you help <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 okay it's good it's good that you mention them because some coaches might be thinking right well i don't know what pain points i might have with with when it comes to to accounting and and stuff like that um so yeah perfect thank you for for clar clarifying that yeah you know what it's an interesting point there because and it's an important point because a lot of sports coaches don't really understand what goes into it and, and how accountants could help yeah and you don't know what you don't know mm. right so you know something like a, a podcast like this definitely can help shed some light on that yeah so 100 percent the type of questions your your account you know your potential accountant may may ask is what what's your business structure are you a limited company are you a sole trader are you a partnership you know some some accountants for example i personally don't work with uh, a business structure which is a partnership mm. you know i may, mainly work with limited company or or sole trader mm -hmm. so business structure is quite an important one um, type of term, turnover that gives you an idea of the size of the business. Um, employees are they running payroll or do, are they looking to run payroll? Another question as well, which is very very important, is understanding where the business wants to go. Yeah, right. Where the sports coach wants to, where do they want to take the business? What do they want to do? Do they want to make it more of a a lifestyle type? you know, business or do they want it to grow to a very, very large bit? Because that also will determine what the most suitable accounting software is, right? Mm -hmm. You want to put them on an account software which can deal with larger, um, larger number of transactions, more complicated integrations, possibly international uh, side of things as well. Mm -hmm. So you want an account software which can grow with them as well. 
Another thing is number of business accounts. How many accounts do they have? Do they have like, you know, the one, two, five bank accounts? That's mm. that's important as well because understanding that, understanding how the business works, but also in the accountant's mind, they're trying to gather up the information in order to correctly um, determine the fees as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are they VAT registered? Do they need to submit a VAT? So these are the type of questions mm -hmm. that accountants will be asking. Mm -hmm. Now, this is also questions where the client, the business owner, should be asking as well is, what software do they use? Yeah. Right? Because that's important as well. I've had some clients where they use some software and I can't work with them, you know? And that's okay. That's okay. And also the business owner should be very in tune with with the conversation as well, because sometimes they may not get, get along with the, the, you know, the accountant. Another right. thing as well, actually, which I'll add is who will they be working with day to day? Mm -hmm. That's a very important one, because especially with the big, big accounting firms, mm -hmm. you may be speaking to the owner of the, the, the accounting firm and they may know a lot of information and they may speak to you, but when you actually, you know, work with, with them, they're probably not going to be the first, you know, portal of contact. Yeah. Point of contact. So they may be working with some of the employees. They may have different departments, you know, that's also something important to, to, to know. Yeah. No, I love it because it's what you, what you're pretty much talking about here is like, defining or being i don't know if it's the correct way of saying it but it's like defining a niche right being very niche specific with with your system um same way as we like when we work with coaches we we help them to say right how do you want to build your business what age groups do you want to work with what type of parents do you want to work with and um, so it's a bit like what you're saying it's like you've got to know your accountant uh, what type of client does he work with? What software does he use? Um, and it's it kind of is one of the reasons why the podcast we do here is very unique because most coaches haven't got a Scooby-Doo about any anything we're talking. So the ones that do take the time to watch the this type of content and take notes, learn, are the ones that when they go and reach out to, to accountants, they'll think, right, what did Andrew say? Or what did yeah. they talk about? Um, so... Yeah, I thought I'd just add that because it's it's really good. Because like when you bring on a, a customer or a client, you know who you want to work with. Because you just said, right, I only work with limited companies or self-employed. Yeah. Anyone outside of that, then I don't tend to work with. Um, so it's very similar to like when we work with coaches, it's like, right, who are you bringing in? Who do you want to work with? Some coaches want to work with everyone, but then they come across different problems when they work with everyone. So, yeah, yeah, just wanted just wanted to add that. I don't know. Does that does that make sense? Yeah, that's so true. It's so true because you can't do, your if you spread yourself too thin in terms of the amount of clients that the type of clients that you work with, you can't really the added value is is quite limited. Then, exactly. right? You're 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 essential. And and don't get me wrong, there are accountants out there, as, as, and probably most accountants out there still just do the year end yeah. the year end stuff and that's okay you know if you're a business owner that you just want that type of function in your business that's okay as well you know yeah. and i and that's the thing sometimes i i offer that to 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 clients if they're very basic if they're a very basic self-employed uh, client they've just started out that's okay i can i can do that i can work with them because they're very very small but when they start becoming bigger and they just want the very basic services, I just don't work with those types of clients. So yeah, it's it's good to know it's good to know uh, who you work with, and also it's very important for the business owner to to have an idea of what what type of accountant they want to work with as well. And that's why it's really good to speak to a number of accountants and 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 gauge yeah. gauge that. Yeah, Brilliant. I was I was quite lucky because I didn't need to speak to a lot of accountants. <laughs> no no that's that's no that's good and um and yeah and you know we've and that's the thing is that when when you started your business we kind of 
it, it grew quite well because there were certain questions you were asking. You know, for example, you wanted to set up a, a quite an efficient payment method because you mm. didn't want to chase your customers. Yeah. And we, our book, uh, uh, what's it called? Accounting software enabled that to happen. So we worked together on that and then things were just automated. So you didn't actually have to think about that. Yeah. You know, so, um, so that was, you know, and that's one of the good things about when you work with an accountant, can they offer those additional services? Because there's going to be accountants where they just don't do that. Yeah. And and that's okay if you're a type of, you know, sports coach or business owner that, that you just want those basic services, that's okay as well. Yeah. Yeah. For those that don't know our story, basically, when I started my, my training business, I kind of started at roughly the same time as you when you started your, your accounting business. Yeah. So we sort of grew together um, and kind of like when I came ac across an obstacle, it was a learning opportunity for you as well in your business. So it was quite, yeah. quite, quite a unique way of um, growing. Yeah. And that's the thing. And then, you know, when you, when you, when you go through those kind of learning uh, points, you apply that to other clients as well. And then you build up that, and that's the thing when you work with when I work with different clients, all of their pain points, there's sometimes there can be some correlation. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. um, and then that can help other clients as well. So so that's um yeah, so that was that was definitely a good experience, but um, but yeah. Okay, so onboarding. So let's say, for example, you're a sports coach and you're happy with to go ahead with your accountant what to expect when signing up first first couple of things is id checks mm -hmm. any accountant who is uh they should i'm not to say it's not to say they should be registered with a professional body but hmrc which is uh which is kind of the the, the tax or kind of authorities they are looking to push for accountants to be registered to uh, to a professional body. At the moment, you don't have to, right? Which okay. can be, it's a little bit scary. It's a little bit scary because there can be issues where clients have signed up with a, an accountant and they're actually not a, a registered with any sort of professional body. So they may not be giving the best advice, but having said that, they may have a lot of experience. But it's hard to tell. It's hard to tell. So let me just stop you there. So that is that just for the UK or is that worldwide? That so, I, don't, I can't speak. Yeah, okay. I can't speak on any, any outside of the UK. Okay. Some maybe in the States, they may require you to, to register okay. with a professional body. But this is one of the things where anyone can essentially call themselves an accountant. Yeah. Which is which, you know, what I mean, so so that's one of the things. So. When they're asking for ID checks, that's usually an indication that they are registered with a professional body because they need to do that. There are some checks they need to do. Mm. And then they'll send you an agreement, which is called the letter of engagement, which is what is the agreed terms? What's the, what's the type of work that's going to be carried out? I send it online and then they just e-sign it. And then the next thing is tax agent authorization. So hey, HMRC will then send a notification to the client to say, hey, the law accounting uh, wants to act as your tax agent. So there's that as well involved and then setting up on software and then the work starts. So maybe, for example, there's going to be some backdated, some clean up services. So let's say the business owner has maybe done six months, 12 months of their own bookkeeping. That needs to be gone onto the system, and maybe a cleanup needs to be uh, needs to be done before moving forward. Perfect, perfect. And uh, and that's pretty much it in a nutshell, Leo. <laughs> very good, very good, Andrew. Perfect. All right. Well, great insight for for any coach watching. Um, as I said during during the, the the episode, it's these podcasts are really good because if you actually take the time to watch them properly, take notes, it's going to save you a lot of problems uh, when it comes to finding accountants. 
Okay, because you when you watch these type of uh, podcasts, you're going to know what to expect, uh, what services you should be looking for, or what, uh, as you just said there, finding someone that is registered, really important as well. Most coaches might not know that. Most coaches might think that's just like a regular thing. But if you've just mentioned that there are accountants that aren't registered, that could bring problems down the line. So any coach watching, something something to take into account as well when you're looking for someone. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So perfect, Andrew. All right. Well, thank you very much for coming on again, sharing again your knowledge, expertise, and um, any final thoughts before we, we go? Not really. It's just uh, just one thing to, to, to say is when you're as a business owner, just remember that that working relationship is going to be hopefully a lifelong relationship yeah. for as long as the business is. So taking that time to really understand and um, getting to know the, the, the accountant and just understand that on the first call is really, really important. And uh, and, and yeah, it's, and, and just ensuring that the accountant does update themselves as well is there new software out there you know mm. uh, and ta tax updates and stuff because you do get a lot of accountants where they do become unfortunately complacent they're using old systems i'm i'm getting for example i'm getting a lot of clients now that are coming to me because their old accountants just are just left behind they're about 10 years behind in terms of software and what things can be done so so yeah that's just one of the things to to take note of as well Okay, perfect, perfect. All right, Andrew, well, thanks again. And uh, looking forward to our next chat coming up. Brilliant. Thanks for having me, Leo. See you later. Cheers.